Hi there, welcome back to our video series of building recommendation systems with TensorFlow. My name is Wei, and I'm a developer advocate at Google. If you are building large-scale recommenders, one of the biggest challenges must be with the large embedding tables in your model. These embedding tables are a critical component, but the embedding lookup operation on them are usually very expensive to run, which, me which makes them a performance bottleneck. So in this video, we're going to discuss how to tackle this challenge with TPU embeddings. Let's first refresh our memory on how retrieval works in modern large-scale recommendation systems. First, we train a neural network model, for example, the classical two-tower model, to learn how to map query an item into a joint embedding space. Second, we map all candidate items in the embedding space with a learned item tower. Lastly, at the runtime, we embed the query into query embedding and look up the nearest items in the embedding space using vector similarity search. While tools like Scan can accelerate the vector similarity search, training the embedding tables might be quite challenging in the first place. If you have a large vocabulary of users or items, say more than 100 million items to recommend, or some high-dimensional sparse features, you will need large embedding tables to store embeddings for them. These embedding tables often may not fit on a single accelerator chip, so now you have to shard them across multiple accelerators, which introduces communication overhead and makes the lookup operation expensive. While there are some software-based solutions that aim to alleviate this, it would be better to tackle this from both the hardware and software side which leads us to TPU embedding. On Google's latest TPUs, there are specifically designed hardware on chip called Sparse Core, which is dedicated to accelerating embedding lookup operation. Sparse Core, together with ultra-fast chip-to-chip -chip interconnect and the software programming interface TPU embedding API gives significant speed up over large recommendation models. Here's an example performance benchmark for a Google internal production recommender model. As you can see, by using TPU embedding on TPU v3 and v4, there's a 10x and 30x speed up over embeddings placed on CPU, which is simply amazing. You can find out more in the paper link below. Now you have seen the power of TPU embeddings. How do you use them? Let's walk through a simple example to understand how to leverage TPU embeddings. Since TPUs live on Google Cloud, we need to have a GCS bucket to feed the data to the TPUs. We're going to use the same old MovieLens 100K dataset as before. But this time, we convert the user IDs and movie IDs to integers. We shuffle and split the dataset into training and test sets as usual. Then we batch and cache the datasets. Note that here, strategy is a TPU strategy object defined in advance. And then we convert them to distributed datasets. Next, we define the optimizer and table configs. To place the embeddings on TPU sparse cores, we need to define table configs, which specifies the vocabulary size and the embedding dimension and then associate features with table configs through feature configs. So here, we are placing movie ID on the movie table and user ID on the user table. Now we can define our recommendation model. It's very similar with a typical TF recommenders ranking model, except this time we're using tfrs.layers.embedding.tpu embedding layer instead of a vanilla TensorFlow embedding layer. And we pass the feature config into the TPU embedding layer along with the optimizer. Next step is to define the call and compute loss methods. Note that when we sum up the loss, we need to scale it down by a factor of global batch size, which is equal to the product of per replica batch size and strategy dot num replica in sync. Finally, we compile, fit, and evaluate the model. After training, we can save the model to a GCS bucket, and we can re restore the checkpoint later. 
And we can also restore the TPU trend weights on CPU. Finally, we can export the CPU model as saved model for serving. We can pass a user ID and a movie ID to the loaded model and then get a rating prediction. So to sum up, today we introduced you to TPU embedding and walked us through how to leverage it to accelerate embedding operations. Although it's a pretty simple model, I hope it gives you a good conceptual understanding of how it works. If you want to learn more, our colleague Webhav, who is a product manager for TPU embedding, gave a more detailed talk at our Recommendation System Dev Summit. We also had a guest speaker, Americ from Snap, to share their practical experience with TPU embeddings. I highly recommend watching that session in the link below. With that, thank you for watching this video. I'll see you next time.